um, Belisi and Lenny um, talking about second declension nouns. Um, we, we introduce you to the, the first type, the basic type of first declension nouns, nouns of the techne type. And then in class today, we talked about the chora variant. Okay. Um, now we're going to talk about the other, the second type of, of uh, a second class of nouns, um, also very big in Greek. There are only three altogether. So, you know, you're going to learn a lot of nouns in the next uh, couple of lessons. Um, the third declension is the, you're going to learn later on, but first and second declension nouns already. Right. A huge number of nouns mm -hmm. in Greek, yep. And, and again, we teach you with a so-called paradigm method. That's P-A-R-A-D-I-G-M, a nice Greek word that means example. So you learn one noun, you learn a bazillion nouns, okay? Um, and on the, on the um, blackboard, uh, is written, the, the first one is masculine, logos. You might want to put an M over it for masculine. And the second one is neuter. Okay, um, if you have this concept of neuter, masculine, uh, I think in feminine we understand neuter, means neither one or the other. Um, originally, actually, in Indo-European, and this is important for what we're going to see, in Indo-European, the language from which um, Greek is a, of which Greek is a descendant, there was no masculine and feminine distinction. The basic distinction was between animate and inanimate. So that's why we're, we're going to see some funny things about masculine and feminine in Greek. Um, and the first example is this class of nouns. The, most of them are either masculine, like logos, the genitive is logu, um, or neuter, like doron, whose genitive is the same, doru, as logu. Okay, notice that the neuter noun has a, uh, an n ending, uh, the nominative, and the accusative, okay? whereas the masculine has an S ending in the nominative and the N ending only in the accusative. And so so there's, these are parts of the gender distinction, but we'll talk more about that, those details in a second. But the, the important thing is that um, there are, in this class of nouns, most of them are either masculine or neuter, but there are a few um, forms that look like logos and that should be masculine, but they, well, it's not that they should be, but <laughs> you would expect them to be masculine, but they are feminine, and we'll talk about them, and they're not such a small number, they're significant, so so it, it's it's that this this uh, form of nouns became masculinized, and the techne type became feminized, originally they were both animate, alive things, as opposed to things that are not alive, and that's what neuter originally meant, okay? So these things have become gra grammaticalized, and the gender distinction's gotten watered down, and mm -hmm. um, all kinds of things like that have happened, but so the picture is slightly more complicated, but you can generally work in Greek with the notion that if it's a first declension noun of the techne type, it's feminine. That, that's, pretty, that's secure. Mm -hmm. There are no masculines of the techne type. Um, most masculine, most nouns of the logos type are masculine, uh, with some exceptions, and all nouns of the doron type are neuter. Okay. So if we look at the endings of logos, okay, I think this is a. Uh, let's again think about the distinction we made between direct and indirect cases. If you look at the nominative and the accusative, logos and logon, the ending is os in the nominative and on in the accusative. Um, that is, you got a short vowel. Right? If you look at the genitive and the dative, the endings are u and oi. Okay, we're not pro I'm pronouncing the i just to be grammatic or flamboyant. We don't pronounce that iota. But you've got a diphthong, one a long and one a short diphthong. So you can see that there's a contrast going on um, in between the two, between the nominative and the accusative, and the genitive and the dative. Okay, they're distinct, but also between those with short vowel endings and those with diphthong endings. Right. So there's a structural feature that's part of the system that we're talking about. Notice that this is our first noun, logos, that has a different vocative from the nominative, okay? And that's log e, the, that e there. What you're seeing here is an alternation in endings between the o vowel, which you see in all the forms of logos and of doron, and is this really typical of this gender, just like the alpha or the eta typifies the the first declension, okay, but you have an alternation here with an epsilon, and the alternation between E and O 
is a very old feature of Indo-European languages. We have it, in, uh, you can see it as a, a derivational category in English in words like get as against got, okay? And there are a slew more of them, and we'll, we'll see more about how that works in Greek. Um, so, so the E may look unexpected, and it certainly is distinctive, um, but no, we're going to see that this is our, our, only in the singular do you have a different vocative from the nominative. What's happened is that, that the nominative and the vocative are generally coalesced in Greek, but this is, this is the only one that we now have that's different. We'll, we'll learn one word that does something even weird with the accent and the vocative because mm -hmm. it's such a weird form. Like the vocative is just like the, the, the idea, <laughs> okay, when you're addressing something. Um, people don't generally address word, okay, in the singular. But so you can see that we're working on the example model, okay, um, and not necessarily specifically tied to this particular form, but but that's the vocative of second declension nouns in the singular. So um, let's look at the forms of doron quickly. The, the important thing is, uh, and this is true of all neuter nouns in Greek, not just second declension neuter nouns, the nominative and the accusative of them are identical. Um, whoops, what's happening? Oh, oh well, sorry. Well, now, now it's drawing up. Okay. Okay, at least he's trying to write on the bottom. Sorry. <laughs> it's not working. So doron and doron are both masculine, uh, both nominative and accusative. This is, this is tricky. I mean, the functions for us of, and the distinction between the subject of a sentence and the object of a sentence are terrifically important. Mm -hmm. But you, it's also a symptom of the fact that they're, real, they're really a pair, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can get along in Greek with uh, neutralizing the difference between subject and object. There are other weird things about neuter nouns that we'll learn. But you notice that that's what's different, that is that the nominative is, ends in new, as does the accusative, okay? That's the only difference between doron and the singular from logos. The other forms, the generative and the dative, are the same. Okay. Now, if we switch to the to the plural of these nouns, um, <coughs> what we have are, are logoi, logon, logois, and logus. Okay. Um, we can't make such a neat categorization of the differences between them, but this is a representative of a huge class of nouns. You need to learn these like you need to learn the techne type and the and the chora variant, okay? In the neuter, okay, um, you may notice that, by the way, that the genitive plural ending is own, again, for both logos and doron. Um, and it is the genitive plural ending own is true of all the declensions in Greek. When we get to the third declension, it's also own. So learning that ending will work for you. <laughs> okay, every single Greek noun that's in own is a genitive plural, um, no matter what class it belongs to. Um, but notice also that the nominative uh, and the accusative plural of dor end in a short alpha, okay? That's, a, that's an old ending for a collection of things. Originally, in Indo-European, um, there was a distinction between dual, that is, things that come in pairs. So first, you have singular, one, one instance of a thing. Dual things that comes in pairs, like mm -hmm. pairs of eyes or pairs of hands or pairs of oxen, okay, mm -hmm. and then uh, um, and then plural, which is more than one, okay. Um, but obviously, if you have a dual thing, it's not it's got to be two that are di that are that are different and are not a pair, okay. Um, so it can be two in, in, in that sense. And then there's this collective ending, which means a group of of examples of a thing, um, a collection of things. So uh, in Greek, it's become generalized as the plural form of neuter nouns, and it no longer has that collective function. But there are some reflexes of this that we'll learn shortly. There are some old, um, old characteristics of it. For example, if a neuter plural noun is the subject of a sentence like dora, the verb is singular, and, it, and it's because it originally it goes back to the notion of it being a collection of gifts instead of many examples of a gift. Okay, a single collection consisting of many things. So, so that, that's a good thing to know. Those of you who know Latin, in in Greek there are a couple of examples of this too. Uh, you can you sometimes have second declension nouns that have both a plural and a collective ending. Like there's in Latin the word for place, locus, has a plural loci that means just a random bunch of places, 
and Loka with this alpha ending, and it means a region, a collection mm -hmm. of places. Okay, so anyhow, those are those are cool things to know. Um, we want to teach you one last thing about about the accent of these words, um, but maybe we'll do that in class tomorrow.